So Edison actually has a long history with energy storage. We really started looking seriously at grid storage in the 2007 to 2010 timeframe. Then we started working closely with vendors. We developed a couple of proposals, which we were successful with, with DOE, which created the heart of the initial parts of our program. In the meantime, we started preparing to deploy projects. The California Public Utility Commission gave us a little surprise with a new challenge to procure 50 megawatts in advance of what was anticipated to be this big storage decision that ultimately came out. I was the author of a bill in California, AB 2514, which basically asked our Public Utilities Commission to look at whether it was appropriate to instruct our investor-owned utilities to when they procured or purchased generation, whether they should also be purchasing storage. Their very first deliberation on the bill, they basically decided to set a mandate. It was small, but they set that mandate. And so by establishing this kind of mandate, the PUC is doing so in order to help accelerate the development of the market and frankly play a role in stimulating that maturation of the technology. In that RFO, we had to compare uh, all resources against each other on a head-to-head -head basis. So you had gas and energy efficiency and demand response, renewables and storage. So that is where I guess we embarked on the, the, the challenge of how to contract for, how to value, and ultimately how to develop storage projects with the market. But in a lot of ways, this is a movie coming to a theater near you because of the 111D and other EPA regulations, I think that many utilities across the nation are gonna be faced with higher penetrations of renewables and things like that. So as we increase our, our reliance on renewables, we're gonna to need to find a way to manage it. And there will be times, and we've already seen it, where we'll have over generation. And when you have over generation, you have two options. One is you can curtail the output, which people aren't particularly happy about. And the second is find a place to put the power. That's where energy storage could be helpful. What energy storage does is it allows us to find a better way to make sure that power grid is always available. It gives us a little bit of a buffer and we can store some electricity in this instant when we might have a little bit more than we need and we can give it back at a time when we might have a little bit less than we need. So the storage provides a very fast, very instantaneous way of balancing the electricity that we need to consume and the electricity that we need to produce in that instant. What energy storage is going to do is stabilize the grid and provide a level of reliability and stability that we've needed for a very long time. It can go in alongside solar plants, alongside wind plants, alongside gas turbines to make them much more effective in the jobs that they're doing. With our procurement of storage, and really our procurement of all resource types, we look at the net value. What's the cost minus the forecast of benefits? And with storage, that's particularly uh, challenging because there are so many potential benefits for storage. You know, of course, there's the energy arbitrage where you can charge it at night and discharge it during the day. There's the answer to service value because they are such flexible devices. But you also have resource adequacy capacity. And then we have potential deferral value. It, it is a different type of resource. And we wanted to make sure that we accurately captured that our valuations. Southern California Edison did a great job with that analysis and they found that it was beneficial to their customers to solve some of these traditional capacity reliability problems in a different way. So in our solicitation uh, we went beyond the 50 megawatt minimum and we actually procured around 260 megawatts. 100 megawatts of that in front of the meter and 160 megawatts or so behind the meter. When Southern California Edison procured five times the amount that the Utilities Commission required, we were just so pleased that, what did that say? That said, number one, the utility realized this is a real need. Number two, the technology is available. Number three, they're cost effective. I think we're all really excited about the role that storage can play in the future grid. First, let's make sure we have a good dialogue across the country and that policymakers be engaged in the discussion and that we might share the lessons we're learning and frankly hear some of the lessons that others will be learning with their own demonstrations. Part of our vision for the distribution grid is one where we can enable those customer choices for technologies, and that's important, and all of us need to be listening to those customers.